Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to AMTU. Today we're going to be covering the basics of ATA codes and how they can make you a better AMT. So to start off, uh, what are ATA codes? Well, the ATA code system was developed by the Air Transport Association to introduce uniformity into aviation. So basically, it's just how you know where to look when you're searching through tech data. Since its establishment in 1956, aircraft technical data has been produced following the ATA code system, which allows easier navigation of the various chapters and sections of tech data. To better explain this, let's look at the AMM reference for the removal and replacement of a sidewall lamp. 33-21-00-401 The ATA code is comprised of a series of paired digits which first denote the chapter, then the section, followed by any subsections, and finally individual tasks. This is especially useful when working with aircraft from more than one manufacturer. Instead of having to learn different formats for each, all you have to do is know the chapter ATA number. For example, imagine we notice a damaged tire on a Boeing 747-800 nose landing gear. If we needed to find the allowable limits, as well as the removal and replacement instructions, we would find what we're looking for in AMM Chapter 32, Landing Gear. Now suppose we notice a worn brake on a Cessna 150. Where would you begin your search for the appropriate limits? How about the removal and replacement procedures? Well, despite the Cessna 150 being a drastically different aircraft than the Boeing 747, and even though we're now considering brakes instead of tires, as long as the tech data was published after the widespread adoption of the ATA format, we could find applicable tech data in Chapter 32. For our next example, an Embraer 175 comes into the hangar with a pilot write-up stating the sidewall light at seat 6 alpha is flickering continuously. What chapter of the AMM would you go to in order to find the removal and replacement instructions? If you said chapter 33, you would be correct. And where would you find the part number for the lamp requiring replacement? Obtaining the part number off the old bulb would be a good place to start. However, we should always confirm that the new bulb we install is effective to the aircraft. And in matching what was previously installed, we leave ourselves open to the risk that the previous mechanic may have installed the wrong bulb. A mistake we're now repeating, only this time attaching our name and license to the incorrectly performed maintenance. Hopefully by now you've determined that the correct chapter for the IPC is also 33, as the ATA code format applies to all manufacturer produced tech data. Now memorizing the ATA codes might not be a bad idea, but the most important thing to learn is which chapters exist in the first place. The number correlating to each is less important because um, modern tech data should feature a table of contents anyways. Let's imagine you're dealing with an APU problem. It's very important to know that the APU has its own ATA chapter, even if you don't remember that it is specifically chapter 49. Now this would save you from searching for an empennage chapter, for example. The empennage being a technical term for the tail of the aircraft. I hope you now see why having a solid understanding of ATA codes should help you become a more proficient AMT. Please let me know if you have any questions or future video ideas in the comment section below. And until next time, wrench on.